G'day. Well, we've got a new clock to show you today. It's, uh, no, it's not that one, it's this one. It's using the Virgin Foliet or Folia, I'm not sure of the pronunciation. Um, as an escapement, something a little different. I wanted to make something without a pendulum, uh, something that goes back to the medieval period and uh, so I, ch I chose to go this way. Um, I mounted it on a stand and the stand is made from acacia deal barter or silver wattle from Tasmania. The timber for the clock itself is actually native cherry which is a member of the sandalwood family I'm hand holding this little camera so it's a little bit shaky sorry about that we're using nine kilos to power it so it's fairly hungry in that sense and we're putting it through 501 gearbox the gear train begins with some H25 chain, which I like using. I find it's, it's really nice, accurate and strong. And then I've cut brass and steel gears uh, to, to uh, put it through 500 to 1. And then that's transferred to the foliot wheel which is split into 25 segments or pins and the verge side of it, the, the steel pellets are hand shaking between the top and the bottom, it's quite complex to watch There's, it's more to it than it appears, it appears quite simple but once you start to watch it carefully and let alone design and build it there's quite a bit more in it and quite a bit more accuracy demanded than you would expect or I expected anyway and the handshake between the bottom and the top as this process progresses it's quite sweet to watch getting the angle of the pallets right was quite complicated um, trial and error in fact and because there were no thrust bearings in medieval times and in fact there is an example of this virgin foliate mechanism still in existence in the Salisbury Cathedral in the UK dating back to 1170 I think but um, I've suspended it all as they did on some linen thread and I've beeswaxed the thread oh, and it's it's good it works quite well like that there goes other clocks <laughs> the the actual clock side of it I've used a little endless belt there and a bevel gear, I made a little brass bevel gear to uh, to transfer it through the 90 degrees and 2 to 1 reduction there to this little time wheel that I've made and you read the time from there so it's not quite 12.30 although you heard another clock chime a moment ago that's made from hue and pine and, and the inlaid timber I've forgotten what the timber is I used there but um, inlaid and a nice little top on it and I love to use a bit of polished brass with all of this even though it sounds relatively quiet in the daytime of a night time it's quite 
quite substantial. So we just put that little folding arm down to arrest its travel of a night time. Of course you vary or calibrate the clock by moving those two centrifugal weights. Um, but it doesn't take much movement to make a difference to it. And we've got a nice little winder to wind it up. I've made that uh, from Hue and Pine on the on the, the knob and also the handle and the two end either end pieces of timber a little story quick story there they're actually Tasmanian oak which is normally a creamy colour but a friend found this log lying submerged in one of the lakes in the wilderness of western Tasmania and when he took it out to have a look at it he realised that the tannin in the water had in fact permeated right through the timber. So he gave me some of it and so I've made it from that. So it looks somewhat like ebony, but it's actually Tasmanian oak. Now I'll be quiet and just let you enjoy the sound of this little clock. and try to hold the camera steady. Well, there it is, a little virgin foliar clock. Nice job to uh, do, I enjoyed it, and I hope you enjoyed it too. Okay, bye-bye.